hits the open open on moose season and I got a moose right there but it's too far I need to come up here to take a look at the moose not to shoot one because it's such a little it's a little too far to get it out but he can get his bike up here but I can't get my side by side up here so I gotta let that one walk it looks like a dry cow well it's a it's a gorgeous morning for the moose hunting opener moose and bear here on the island of Newfoundland and I just seen a moose up over here it was a cow a dry cow and she was 150 yards away. I ranged her with my uh, Sims uh, rangefinder. But I'm not shooting any anything up that way because it's too hard to get out. I just wanted to come. Up. I knew I'd see a moose. See, I, I knew I would see a moose if I came up here. I just wanted to come up here and, and see a moose, you know. But I'd shoot one down on a bog right down here. If she was on that little bog. Right down in here, I would have shot her, because that's how I go to get out. And uh, you know, it would be uh, perfect. It's a nice dry bog, perfect spot to get a moose, and I could get the bike almost to it. And my game, my game carrying cart, would help me get it the rest of the way. But uh, always. Always moose up here, you know. So I just wanted to come up here and and see a moose, and that's what I did. And got it on film. I I hope I hit the record button for you for you guys. A lot of times I don't. I always see moose down here too. This valley in here has has a really good spot for moose, but it, it's a sheer rock wall, kind of on both sides, so. Unless you're planning on to go down there, take your whole family down there and camp on the moose for two or three weeks to eat the whole thing there. It don't make sense to shoot a moose down there, does it? But uh, we got a good chance of rain and boy, I tell you, it's getting real dark. So I'm going to make my way back now this morning. I came here, I seen what I wanted to see. And I got a little bit more scouting or, or, uh, out to do. So, anyway, uh, I'll be heading that way. Well, I was uh, coming out this morning to set up these two trail cameras. I set up a couple last night. But, I'm not going to set them up. Somebody's been coming up into, uh, into this little area. Uh, where I've been seeing moose. In fact, I had two bulls calling back to me this morning. But somebody's been come up here on bike. So, where one bike goes, another one will follow. So, I can't take the chance on losing any gear. So, I'm going to take these trail cams back home with me. I'm not sure if you can see the uh, bike tracks there or not. you can anyway it it was a an exciting morning I slept in thought I had my alarm set and I didn't never woke up until just after seven so by the time I had breakfast and got in here uh, you know the best part of the morning hunt for me I find is I was already over I like being in the area letting the daylight come in on you you know but anyway, I decided to come in here and set up trail cams anyways. And yeah, so I was coming out here to set up those trail cameras. But somebody's been coming in here on their bike. So 
for me, uh, that's a huge, uh, a huge no-no. Uh, there's no way I'm putting out any of my trail cameras where other people are coming and kind of where one bike goes, another one will follow. I might have already said that, but uh, this is a good area. I'm after seeing a few moose in here already. Uh, I think it is my third morning hunt. And uh, every morning I see moose, except for today. But I had today, I had two bulls calling back to me. So that's a good sign. Uh, it's probably it's a, it's the second Saturday of moose season. So I don't know if it's the uh, the 18th or 19th. I'm not really sure. I don't even have my phone or anything on me to tell me what what the day is. But um, I know it's Saturday and. I know uh, the bulls are starting to call back to the calls, so that's a really good sign. I just got the bull uh, grunting back at me, two of them actually, and uh, then the wind picked up. I don't know if you can hear it howling in the back, and I like to show you some more trees and stuff, but anyway, uh, they went quiet after the wind really picked up. So. Uh, I'll show you now. Uh, I'm doing a moose hunt on the cheap today. I'll show you my gear. So uh, these are the shooting sticks. My shooting sticks are, uh, I got them at the dollar store. I You get them in the gardening section at the dollar store. So all I did was I tied them together and wrapped the tape all around it. And my call is also a pylon from the dollar store so my shooting sticks and call together might have been I think uh, it was two dollars for the cone two or four dollars I can't maybe it's four dollars four dollars for the cone and I think two dollars for the stick so uh, my uh, my moose hunting set up for six bucks And the faithful O303 British Sport. It's a sport model, and uh, I got a scope on it now because, well, since I turned, I can't remember if it's 45 or 47, I started to need glasses, so it sure does help. But I'm leaving. I'm going that way. I don't want to show you where I'm at. I don't want to give away my spot because I uh, well the moose are in here and they're calling back so it's a really good sign and this is a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, the two different types of cameras I'm using this year I have a couple of 8-man and a couple of uh, stealth cams uh, stealth cam 12 versus the 8-man 20 I think it is and uh, regardless of the amount of megapixels the 8-man um, I don't know if you can see it's kind of have a parabolic shape sensor where the stealth has the flat sensor and I find the animals got to be right in front of the stealth in order to trigger it whereas the 8-man you'll see in my video uh, that I got coming out with the cameras um, the 8-man compared to the Stealth, it was cheaper. I paid $126 for two 8-man and $140 or $150 for two Stealth. And the Stealths I got a couple years ago, the 8-man I got this year, and they were cheaper. And at least, I'm going to say three times the camera of the Stealth, in my personal opinion. 